Hello and welcome to Geek It Plays Epic Landscape Tutorials. This is episode number one of the series entitled Green Valley. In this first tutorial we're going to be discussing how to recreate a panoramic view of a valley. To start out we're going to go to our render options and change our aspect ratio to widescreen. And we'll also set our render destination to main view and our dimensions to 640 by 480. We've chosen a wide screen because we're doing a panoramic landscape and I think you'll find that it's going to turn out really nice. We're going to start by creating our basic terrain and we're going to right click on it and choose edit object. Once we're in the terrain editor we're going to click on reset so we get a flat terrain to start with. Click on paint and set size to 75 percent, softness to maximum and flow to about 30. Our next step is to create some soft little ridges here with the raise button. And don't worry too much about making it perfect. It's really hard to make a mistake at this point. You can always hit the reset button and start over if you don't like how it's turning out. Something like this. Now let's go to effects and add gravel and stones and you can look at the profile by right clicking and dragging and this terrain will represent the foreground for our scene to make things a little more interesting we're going to move the camera up and we're going to select our terrain and move it towards the camera and then we're going to angle it downward so that it's creating a nice slope I'll just adjust that and note that your view is going to look a little bit different than ours. What's important though is that we're creating a valley here going down the hillside and it will create a point of interest for introducing our viewer to our scene. Next we're going to create a second terrain and this is going to be the base for the valley floor so we're going to resize that and pay close attention to the main camera view to what's happening as you're resizing it. And notice it's already starting to become a little bit interesting let's right click on that and edit object and let's reset the terrain and we're just going to start adding in some little rolling hills on our valley floor just have a little fun with it and don't make anything too aggressively tall uh, something like this now let's add some stones and click OK. So here's our valley floor and to make it a little bit more interesting let's just raise this up a little bit and then we're going to angle it towards the foreground or let's raise it up first and then angle it towards the foreground and that will intersect nicely with the foreground you might notice on the right side of the train here it's cut off a little bit so we're going to stretch it out there you go that's better now our terrain still has these square hard edges so we can fix that by adjusting the clip properties in our terrain editor okay and notice that knocks the hard edges off and makes a nice smooth transition our next step is to create two hills in this area so click the terrain button and we're going to position the terrain and stretch it out and resize it. We're going to play with it until it looks good and it's positioned how we want it. Stretching it a little bit more. Okay. And the main camera view is very helpful in this case as you're resizing and positioning it so you can see how it's going to look. Okay, keep working with it. Let's create a second hill. Do the same thing, just stretch it out, position it. Don't forget to look in the camera view. And now we have two hills. Let's preview it. Here we're going to examine our progress, and you see there's a little empty space over here in this corner. We could just use some material to fill that in, or we could add another little small terrain. And that's what we're going to do this time. something like that and that'll be another little hill for us and that looks good so let's add some mountains in the background let's create a, another terrain and resize it 
make it a little bit taller and here's a second one and let's just that one won't be quite so tall we'll just nestle it in there and now our last mountain and let's make this one the tallest mountain by simply stretching it up maybe a little bit less okay now let's select our middle mountain and let's make it a little bit taller maybe you have to just look at your camera view and just adjust it until it feels right to you just go ahead and experiment with it there's no right or wrong way to do it you can do whatever you like so here's your mountains and the foreground and the valley floor so basically so far we've just been creating shapes and our layers of interest so we have our faraway mountains our middle ground and hills our fields and our foreground okay so now let's assign some materials so let's select each of our mountains and double click on materials to open our advanced material editor we're going to choose mixed materials and select the default and double click on that and let's scroll up and select landscapes and rocks and plants for the second material we're going to set it to snow let's change it to default and we'll select our influence of environment and adjust the altitude and rotate the orientation a little bit a little bit more and set this to 79 degrees so now what we're going to do is click on materials mix tab and we're going to change the mixing method to cover so that it will cover with the snow instead of blending now to make this more interesting we're going to go into the edit function which will affect the distribution of materials let's increase the roughness and gain a little okay let's examine what it looks like let's just adjust the mixing proportions a little bit Okay, and let's change the mapping to object standard and let's preview that if we look here you'll notice the higher elevations have more snow and less over here and you'll notice that the way we've angled the mountains maybe one side of the mountains gets a little bit more sun than the other side and the snow is melting on one side okay looks good but I think we should change the size of the middle mountain so let's go back in and just make it a little bit shorter and work with that and I think it'll give us a more interesting shape here and not so uniform next we're going to address the valley floor so let's select that terrain and let's select the material and it'll give us our material editor and we're gonna select vegetation okay we're going to turn this into an ecosystem so let's select ecosystem and go to the general tab and let's add a plant and let's select trees and choose a rural maple tree now on the density tab we're going to uncheck decay near foreign objects we don't want any of that and under scaling and orientation let's leave those the same on color let's change it to variable color so select the color and edit the color map we're going to choose a dark green somewhere in this range and let's choose another color a little bit lighter green maybe close to a tan and what we want to create here is a nice variation in color because that's what we see in nature I'm going to click on edit function and add a fractal node I'm going to change the distribution on that and let's increase the roughness and gain just a little click OK and populate let's preview what we have and the trees here are a little bit too large so let's make an adjustment and click on scaling and scale this down a little bit let's populate that a little bit more populate let's view that okay now the trees are the right size let's go back and add some density so click on the density tab and bump that up to about 90 populate that and view alright so now you see that we have 
really nice density here and notice how the colors have a nice variation and it gives it enough variety that it's, you know, not too boring. I'll click OK. Now we'll address our hill right here. He's hiding so let's drag him up. There we go. And tilt him forward. Alright, so now you can see I'm just peeking up over the top of the trees. We're going to add the same material for this one. Click OK. And let's change it to an ecosystem and add a plant. And let's use the same plant. And this time we're going to increase the density to about 90% again. Decrease the scaling. And let's populate. And we're going to leave the color the same because you won't notice any difference from that distance. Let's choose our other hill. And this one we're going to add a material. And we'll use the same material and change it to an ecosystem. You notice a pattern here. We're going to add a plant. Use the same tree. Let's change the decay and bump up the density. And let's adjust the scaling by decreasing it, creating some distance. And if we preview here, you'll see we've got different sizes of trees, um, some in the distance, and they get a little closer and then a little closer up still. This gives us some depth and interest, and notice it kind of increases your field of view. And you'll see when we apply it here, it'll add even more and click OK. And now let's work on our foreground a little bit. Let's start by creating a mixed material. We'll just set the distribution of materials and add a couple color guides for ourselves. We're also going to change the influence of orientation and give it a slight angle. And let's change the mixing proportions until the purple um, is showing through. Just keep adjusting it until we get what we want. A little bit more. There we go. Now let's play with the altitude a little bit and adjust that. We'll see how that works out. Let's preview. Now you notice here it kind of shows how the distribution is going to look. When it has, We're going to have some grass and some rocks over here. Now when we're satisfied with that, let's choose the material and we'll add another layer and we're going to add some vegetation to this material. You notice we have mixed material here. Let's add the vegetation and for the default let's add something with a little more rock in it. Perhaps a organic vegetation. Okay let's move to the environment and we'll change the altitude just a bit and the fuzziness and adjust the alpha boost. Now let's adjust our purple pink material which is going to be our rocks. Double click on that. We'll choose rocks and plants. And let's let's preview that. Actually on second thought, because we're going to be so close up, let's decrease the scale which will give us a finer texture. And let's preview that. And one thing you'll notice here that we'll probably want to do a bit better job of is the edges right here. Um, we'll want to make them blend a little bit better and make them look more natural. Let's double click on our material in the default material. Let's just make it a little bit smoother in this area right here. We'll want it to blend more. Let's go to our second material. I'll select the vegetation and rock. And let's adjust the fuzziness again. We're just blending it a little better and making it look more natural. Click OK and preview. Okay, it's already starting to look a little more interesting. And let's put some more plants. I'm going to edit our material again and choose material, convert that to an ecosystem and choose the first layer and we'll go to general and plant and we're going to add the funiculum. 
We'll just wait a second for our plant to show up and let's populate the scene. And one more thing we want to do here is go into color and add a little bit more color to our plant. It looks pretty nice in our thumbnail over here so let's go up and preview. Alright, that's starting to look pretty good. Our vegetation is coming in. We have all of our little plants here in the foreground. They're doing pretty good, but it's a little bare right over in here. We could probably use a little more plants. So let's go ahead and change our density just a bit. We're going to just bump it up and populate that. And look at your thumbnail, and it's not quite there yet, so let's make our density even more. And small moves, just keep checking your thumbnail. Now, at this point, this is when I start to get really excited about my scene here. It's starting to look really nice, and we can start working on the atmosphere. Alright, you can browse to Atmosphere through Atmosphere menu or you can hit F4 and this brings up our Atmosphere Editor. We're just going to start by changing this to Volumetric Model and you can see how that one small change is affecting our scene. It's changed it drastically. You can start to see the haze that the atmosphere has applied. And notice it's created quite a bit of distance. And that said, we probably don't want quite so much haze so we're going to decrease the density. Uh, adjust the fall off. Make that a little bit greater. Uh, scale it back. Okay. Keep examining your thumbnail as you make these changes just to see how it's affecting your scene. And let's do a quality boost and let's see how that looks. Please don't be afraid to toy with these settings, you know. You can always hit the undo key and you learn so much by just experimenting. Let's add a little sunlight and we'll decrease the decay and up the intensity just a bit. And let's preview that. Alright, wait for it. Alright, so with actual lighting in here, it looks pretty good. You notice that we have our haze going on, and we definitely have separation of our different levels. It creates really good distance for us. Now one thing I want to add, one thing that this scene is really missing, and I can't do a scene without including something like this, it's a big tan cube. Just put that in there and resize it. I'm just kidding. It's not really just a tan cube. What we're creating is some fog and we're going to angle it just a bit and move it up just a little. If you look in your preview um, you'll actually be able to see where the fog is going to reside. And what we want to do with this is just create kind of a magical morning mist. So it's early morning and there's still a fog hanging over the valley. To accomplish that we're going to add a thin white smoke material to represent our fog. Then in the volumetric settings we'll decrease the overall density and increase the fuzziness. Let's preview that. Now you'll see our newly added mist is hanging over the valley gently winding through the trees here. Basically creating a really nice relaxed look. It's really starting to look good. You'll also notice that we haven't added any clouds and I don't think I will do that. Alright, only a few steps left so let's open our atmosphere editor, change our lighting model to global illumination and let's change the color of the ambient light to let's try something like a really light violet. This lighter gray color will give us a more natural look. Okay, and we're going to play with our fog and haze just a little bit more. This is where you get brownie points for experimentation because you can really make or break a scene here. You can play with this a bit more, 
but I think that this looks pretty good. So we're going to call that done. It's a beautiful landscape. So let's complete our final render. We'll go with the superior quality and change our width and height. And let's look at our beautiful landscape. All right, here we have our final render. And I think it looks really nice. Of course you could spend a little more time than the 20 minutes we've had here, but what I really wanted to show you is how easy it is to create mountains and trees and breathtaking views with realistic atmospheres in this incredible software. And as always, I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial by Geek at Play Studios, and I'd like to invite you to visit us on the web at www.geekatplay.com.